guys, it's Julie. I'm in downtown Frederick on Carroll Creek, um, and I'm with Tank, and we are out actually trying to find dogs. This guy struggled hard, extreme, very severe with leash reactivity. Leash reactivity means you have him on a walk, he sees a dog, he loses his mind, goes crazy, barking, screaming, rolling, howling, um, you name it. Owner couldn't get it to stop, so what did they do? They had to limit their walking routes. They had to try to avoid dogs at every cost because he was unmanageable. She was scared he was gonna slip out of his collar and his harness. That would be really bad. But what do we do as trainers? We go out and try to find dogs. We don't try to avoid the issue because if we avoid the issue, it never gets better. So we actually go out dog hunting. We gotta find these dogs and give him the right experiences. So let's see what we find today. All right, while we're on a dog hunt, I can talk to you about the heel position. We like him to be slightly behind us. We really like the ears to be back and the forehead smooth. If he's not behind us, he can't see where we're going. It's that simple. If you have a dog who's pushy and they're always just about an inch ahead of your leg, there's no way they can see where you're going to follow you. So if you make a right hand turn, odds are they're not gonna be turning right with you because they're ahead of you. So it gives you an opportunity to click the remote and get them back with you. And they'll learn, gee, I better follow this human, follow that left leg or else I'm not gonna know where she's going and it's gonna get corrected. The ears back and the forehead smooth that's a sign the dog is with me and they're not scanning for things to react to. Ears up, forehead wrinkled, they're thinking about the next thing they're going to react to. They're loading. So we've got a dog up here. Let's go find it. Here it is. So this is what we do. We go out and we try to find dogs. And we say, Tank, what are you going to do? We're looking for neutrality. We don't want screaming, barking, crazy reactions. Okay, no reaction to that dog. That's great. We're going to find another dog. guys can see lapses like when that duck quacked his ears went up really quickly his forehead wrinkled but he immediately brought himself back out of it that's what we're looking for so I come out at this time of day because uh, sometimes a lot of people are out walking their dog before work but it's pretty empty I'm glad we saw that one dog we're also gonna stop through the park Baker Park, see what dogs we can find there. Again, we're not avoiding dogs. We are actually out looking for them. So we can say, what are you gonna do? And we can praise the right choice and correct the wrong choice. And you stack those experiences up and the wrong choice just goes away. It stops happening. All right, we've moved on to a new location. We are at Baker Park. And this one little strip here um, between the bell tower and like where the tennis courts are that's really a hot spot for dogs it's a really popular pl place for people to walk dogs um, and i can see why it's gorgeous this is right here we're walking over to it and there's the walking path so we're just going to do this loop a couple times and hope that we run into some dogs uh, i already see one over there walking the opposite direction and uh, i'll keep you updated as to what tank does hopefully i can get some of these on camera but as you probably can imagine it's a little difficult at times to heal a dog, a leash reactive dog, handle the remote and film. So here we go. Hey guys. Good morning. Good morning. No pressure on the collar. Golden Retriever up here. Beautiful reaction from Tank, which is no reaction. 
Very nice. Trying to get some dogs walking towards us. Bull Terrier. <laughs> Sit. Good. Okay, heel. Thank you. Good job, Tank. Very nice job. Hi. Good boy, Tank. Okay, guys, so you, you've seen in this video, we've walked pro probably by at least 10 dogs maybe a little under 10 dogs, some dogs behind fences, some dogs walking ahead of us, passing by dogs. Um, and he's just doing so well. There's no whining. There's not even any thoughts of going after the dogs. And this is because of the experiences that Josh has given him in the days and weeks leading up to these final walks. He's only got a few days left. So by now, we've completely shut down the desire to go after dogs because he's tried it, found out it's not pleasant anymore. It doesn't give him that same adrenaline rush that it used to because he used to do it and feel high levels of adrenaline, almost the feeling that you get when you're on a roller coaster. It just pumps him up. It makes him feel so good and so powerful. We've now taken that experience and made it not so pleasant. So he no longer desires to go after dogs. So what we're left with is a dog who's just neutral when he sees other dogs. He's not scared, he's not nervous, he just doesn't wanna lunge anymore, and that's the result we're aiming for. I don't know if you've noticed in the past buys, but there's no stress. He knows exactly what we don't want him to do, and he's perfectly happy just staying in heel. But notice, we're not holding him there. There's a difference. Just wanna make sure we've this is our final walk. We're walking by the lake. We've walked by the creek. We've walked by the canal, all the dog hotspots, and uh, now we're walking by the lake. So lots of opportunities to walk by people, which he has no problem with. Lots of people, not a ton of dogs. I mean, I got some good experiences. We're gonna bring him back probably on a weekend afternoon there's so many people out but like hardly anyone has a dog see all the people nobody has a dog lots of people behind me too dogless